Good evening, future Boilermakers, and welcome to this YouTube live broadcast that will give you a great understanding of the Office of Recruitment, Retention, and Diversity, and the services we provide here at the Polytechnic Institute at Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana. My name is Ryan Kirchner. I'm the Associate Director of Recruitment here for the RRD office, and the rest of the RRD team is here as well, and they'll introduce themselves in a minute, but I just want to first go over a couple of logistical things for this broadcast. Uh, we do have a chat window in the YouTube broadcast that you can type in questions. Uh, we have some topics that we have prepared already that we're going to talk about, but we want to know what kind of questions you have about the things that we provide for you as a student here in the Polytechnic. So please uh, log in with your Google account to join that chat and type in those questions. Uh, let us know what you want to know and we'll respond to those either in the chat. Um, I'm going to respond to those questions as well as John, our technical director, um, will be responding to those and we'll also pull some of those questions in to actually respond to during the broadcast with our staff as well. Um, if you don't have a chance to submit a question or you don't get a question answered that we want to that you want to hear more about, please feel free to send us an email at techrecruit at purdue.edu and we'll try to answer that as soon as we can. Probably tomorrow we'll get to those questions that you email in as well. Um, you can also rewatch this broadcast at our Polytechnic Live page. Um, so just go to our website and search Polytechnic Live and be able to find this broadcast as well as all the other broadcasts that we've put out there over the last several months. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Tony to introduce herself and kind of give a little welcome and then we'll have the rest of the panelists introduce themselves as well. Good evening, everyone, and welcome class of 2024. My name is Tony Mungia. I'm the Director of Recruitment, Retention, and Diversity for the Purdue Polytechnic. Um, you're in a great place. The Purdue Polytechnic is preparing you for, the, for your future, and there's so many opportunities here. Uh, hopefully, you've started VSTAR and are on your way to becoming an official Purdue student. You're going to be meeting, hopefully, you're meeting with your advisors and pre-registering for your classes. Um, we have great advisors, probably the best on campus, but I'm a little bit biased. Uh, but they will be with you with all four years, kind of guiding you and helping you uh, with minors, made your major and classes and things like that. Our advisors are your first point of contact. Um, we, in our office, we partner with them, your advisors. The Office of Recruitment, Retention and Diversity is here to help you and we're all about your success. Today, we're gonna talk about services and opportunities that we provide. We can support you um, by getting acclimated, encouraging you to become a leader and join some of our student organizations, finding internships um, to assist you with academic support and those types of things. But again, we're all about, we're, we're all for your success and we're here to help you in any way that we can. So with that, welcome. And it's good to have you at Purdue and in the Polytechnic. Thank you. All right, thanks, Tony. Yeah, everything that she just talked about, the things that we do, is what we're going to talk about tonight, so you can kind of get a great idea of what we're doing here. So, um, turn it over to the rest of our panelists to introduce themselves. We'll next go to Kathy. Good evening, class of 2024. My name is Kathy Pullings, and I'm the Recruitment and Diversity Coordinator for the Polytechnic. Um, what does that mean? That means that I go out into schools, um, talk with counselors, talk with students, um, to help recruit. Um, and I also recruit um, with um, diversity. So that means I assist with recruiting females as well as underrepresented minorities. So um, Ryan and I, we do a lot of um, tag team together to go out to recruit students. Thanks, Ryan. All right, thank you, Kathy. And next up is Cindy. Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad you've chosen Purdue Polytechnic uh, for your your major, and I look forward to seeing everyone this uh, fall in some capacity or another. Um, I've uh, the associate director for retention in the Polytechnic, and I'm here to help uh, you with your academic success and um, your growth and development. Um, as you move forward into your new career through your college career and uh, transition into the next phase of your life. So uh, welcome and I'm gonna turn it back to Ryan until we talk again. All right, thank you, Cindy. And last up is Guillermo. Hi everyone, my name is Guillermo and I am the administrative assistant for the Office of Recruitment, Retention and Diversity for the college. So we are located in the main floor. So 
uh, essentially when you come in our offices one of the first offices you'll see and i sit in the front so you probably see me um you know if you uh, decide to visit us um i support um the office and i also support um the college so i support anybody that comes in you might be someone who might see me uh in the fall and i'll try my best to uh, direct you guide you where you might um get your uh, questions answered so all right awesome thank you very much guillermo um and again my name is ryan kirchner associate director of recruitment and like kathy i go and uh, visit with schools um, and talk to with prospective students about the polytechnic programs and help them understand what we offer and how it can be help them be successful in their career and, and hopefully find a path that works with them in terms of our academic programs here in the polytechnic so all of you are you know have committed to come to, to join us either here on campus or online um, and those those are the things that we're going to talk about is how we help support you in terms of those academic personal professional support um, resources that you might need so first i'm going to start off with cindy um, talking about a program that really focuses on focuses in on academic mentoring and coaching um, to have her talk about our best program that we offer so our best program is a program that we have uh, in the college um, and what it does it matches you up uh, with someone uh, a tutor if you will um, i like to call them academic coaches because what they're their role is what their goal is is to help you with specific classes but also um, to help you understand how to approach the class not just how to do the homework or how to do the lab but how you approach the class you get the most information out of it um, the best program uh, these tutors are available to you free of charge and we have a number of different ways that you can engage with the the uh, academic coaches through best uh, one of them is one-on-one, -on -one, like if you just want some one-on-one -on -one sessions and it's not specific times, you just reach out to the academic coach through Boiler Mentor or Boiler Connect. Um, and hopefully you guys are all familiar with Boiler Connect because you've used that for VSTAR to get registered. Um, so you can do one-on-one -on -one sessions. We also have where you can do small group uh, virtually. Um, and, and when I talk about this, it's really about what we've done in the past. We're still working through how we're going to do this this fall and what that that means for us. Um, and then we also have open labs that uh, these the best tutors, the best academic coaches are available uh, in the lab to help you out. And if not, then connect you with the faculty member and even um, how to approach faculty members to get the most out of your visit with the faculty members. Um, again, it's free of charge and all you have to do is connect with them. If you need more information, uh, we have the resources there uh, online and you can reach out to us through through that way. So um, for any parents that are there um, through on, on our chat here today, um, Please keep this in mind when your student calls and says, I'm having problems with this class. We have a lot of resources on campus and um, just encourage them to reach out. But the first place or one of the to the best program. Yeah, great. Yeah, that's that's great. And yeah, I think you cut out a little bit there, but I think you're right. The the first place to turn in terms of polytechnic courses is absolutely the best program uh, that stands for building excellence for students in technology. Um, if you weren't aware, Purdue uses a lot of acronyms, so just be prepared to get used to that. Um, but that's one thing that yeah, we offer here. And Cindy did mention a few other that there's resources across the, the entire campus in, in the university here as well. Uh, talk about those just for a minute. Academic Success Center. Um, that's kind of our, our overall hub for learning how to manage your time and do some, you know, but improve your study skills and your test taking skills, um, time management, uh, prior, you know, prioritization and, and not procrastinating. Um, they also offer in the student success office, the supplemental instruction program. It's kind of similar to best where they have, but they have structured sessions uh, geared towards courses that are offered typically math, science, um, those types of courses across the university uh, but there's a lot of different courses that they offer supplemental instruction so same kind of idea where students who have done well in the courses work with the faculty offer those sessions so you go meet with them and, and answer those questions um, that you have about those classes 
and there's tutoring services all over the the, the, the entire university as well that you're able to find um, outside of the polytechnic if you're taking some of those general education courses um, that are offered as well. So we can help you find those. Um, just come chat with us and we'll, we'll put you point you in the right direction of where you can find those as well. Um, and then Tony, I'm going to turn to you a little bit, just kind of how else do would you say we offer academic support? Because uh, I know you've had some, some students in the, in the past that have uh, maybe had some questions or issues, and how do you how, help guide them with that, with those questions? Um, well, you know, besides the academics, sometimes there are issues in, and students, um, you know, need, need some support. And so if, if there's maybe just a, an issue with someone in your class, or an issue with, um, um, you know, maybe a professor, maybe something that wasn't appropriate, or and you don't know who to talk to, or you think something you need to talk to someone about it. Um, you can come into our office, and you know, we will we'll listen. Um, and sometimes I serve like an ombudsman, you might say, where if if someone had some kind of issue that needs to go further, that you know, maybe I need to share with the dean, or I need to share with the department head. That's something that you come in; it's confidential, and um, you know, your name will probably never be mentioned, but it's something for faculty uh, or department heads and the deans to be aware of. Great, that's, that's good that you have, we have that resource available for students to, to make sure they have that support and if there is some issue going on like that. Um, and Cindy, I'm going to turn back to you because we do have a, a seminar course in, that we offer called Tech 100. Could you talk about what that course is and, and how students can get involved with that? Absolutely. So it's a uh, uh, academic success for students in the the polytechnic, and um, basically what the course uh, does is introduce you to all the resources on campus that are available to you because we have a lot of them. Um, and college is different than than high school, and you know we're taking it up a notch. And one of the probably the most common things I hear from high school students as they transition into college in their first month or two is, you know, I never really learned how to study in high school. And so one of the things that we talk about are the resources that are available on campus to help you a, learn how to study and um, how to approach the different types of courses because some courses are lecture format, some are uh, lab formats, um, some are small group discussions, some have a lot of reading to them. And so understanding how to approach the different course types of courses and what resources are available to help you through that, because almost every class on campus has some type of support system, particularly in uh, the first couple of years. And so one of the things that we do in the Tech 101 is we talk about the different resources and what you need to be successful while you're um, and the polytechnic and while you're in uh, college. And so we bring in different guest speakers to talk about their resources. Um, Ryan uh, already mentioned the Academic Success Center. They're one of them that we uh, bring in. We bring in uh, the Dean of the college to talk about um, resources and what his hope is for students. And um, so things like time management, financial ma management, um, even health and wellness that we have available through our uh, uh, CORAC, our Cordova uh, Recreational Center on campus. And so there's a lot of different things that we encourage students to participate in. Students, uh, one of the big things that students do as uh, part of their homework is what we call an individual development plan. And we talk about goals and objectives and how to obtain those goals. Uh, within that semester, the first year, and even um, how to to uh, how to think about and apply for internships, which is another important component of your academic career uh, within the Polytechnic. And so we bring in even resources like the Center for Career Opportunities to talk about how you develop your resume, um, how you talk with uh, even things like how you. Um, gain information and network and, and those types of things. So we do a lot in the course. It meets once a week on Thursdays. Um, it's one credit. Um, I don't want to say that I'm an easy grader, but it's a really very helpful course um, to, to manage your professional development and your professional 
career as a student there. Um, and I guess with that, Ryan, I'm going to, to stop there and we can turn it over. No, I think that that's a great description of what goes on in that class and, and kind of brings all those things together that were, you know, in terms of academic and um, professional development support. That's really good. And then, Tony, you also teach a, a seminar course, Tech 101. Could you go into what that looks like and, and what that course is all about for us? Sure. Uh, Tech 101 is, is called Women in Technology Exploring the Possibilities. And it's associated with the Women in Technology Learning Community, but you don't have to be part of the learning community to, you know, to take the course. And it, it does say Women in Technology, but anyone can take the classes, not just uh, women. Um, as part of the class, we have alumni leaders that come back and they share their story, female alumni leaders. Last year, we had um, the president of, well, she used to be president of Duke, Indiana, and she got a promotion and now is vice president for Global uh, Duke Global. And then uh, we had uh, a, a captain from United Airlines. We had a recent uh, alumni who, who were engineers. We had business analysts. We've had um, vice president of uh, for Gardner associates who used to be at uh, Cummins, a, a CIO. Uh, so it, as you can see, women at all different times in their in their life and um, at different, you know, yeah, just different times. And they share their stories. They tell what it's like to be a female in, in the industry that they've selected, you know, their successes, their, um, you know, how they got through it and those types of things. We also discuss gender communication. Um, the dean also attends this class and shares a little bit about goal setting. Um, we also uh, create a, a resume and um, one of the other things, um, we have several assignments where we try to get the females connected to other females in the college, like uh, with, with student organizations, but also with other female faculty. We do a research project in the class as well, where you uh, do a research in a, a certain company. Uh, we take um, the 100 best companies from Working Mothers magazine, and um, we, you know, we put in, we're usually in groups of two or three students sometimes four, and we do a research on a company. It's a really, really good class. Um, it is open to everyone. It is one credit. It meets on Fridays. And so if you're interested, please sign up, because like I said, you don't have to be part of the, the learning community to be part of the class. Thanks. Well, Tony, I'm going to stick with you for this next topic. And you mentioned getting students connected to each other. And, and I think we have a program called Witty Sisters. And can you talk about what that is in terms of mentoring that we offer? Sure, Witty Sisters is one of our mentoring programs in the college, and we've partnered with the Women in Technology Student Organization, and then we get um, usually everyone in the learning community students in the class as well or any student that's a, a freshman and we try to partner them with an upper class female that's in their same major and then this usually the students meet once or twice a month um, they you know they, they talk about their classes uh, since the upperclassman has already taken the classes that the freshman is, is has taken it's a good opportunity for them to kind of help navigate some of the courses talk about what's going to be happening and help them prepare what you know for the class they also have and do fun things they um you know may go out to lunch they may go out to dinner on sunday nights there's just different things that they do but it's a really good way to connect with someone who's already been there and who's already done it and and you know kind of like a big sister that's why it's called witty sisters uh, that, that sounds like it's great to have that connection the upper class like you said that done some of the things that the freshmen are starting to do already or going into doing they kind of have that that guiding hand if you will to, to go through that process that's very cool um and then we, another faculty or another mentoring program that we have is is when involving our faculty mentoring um and cindy could you talk a little bit about how our students get involved with that for us yeah so so imagine yourself you made it through your freshman year, you're, you've done a great job and now you want to learn a little bit more. And so now we're taking you into your, your sophomore year. And at the beginning of your sophomore year, you're going to get an email uh, from the universe or from the college, uh, the Polytechnic Institute, um, inviting you to participate in this program. You're matched with a faculty member then um, and you meet with them um, on a regular basis to talk about various things uh, uh through that but it's a it's another great mentoring program that you can do again starting in your 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 sophomore year uh, and and so we've 
put a lot of emphasis on what you can do your freshman year because that's you guys are coming in right um but then as you trans uh, as you progress through your uh, freshman year your first year and you go into uh, your second year you want to think about giving back and then participating then as the mentor and some of these other programs and so um, I think it's a nice combination then this faculty mentoring program along with then you becoming a mentor and giving back uh, the way that others before you have given back and, and served as mentors so so keep that in mind as you're as you're um, thinking about opportunities and possibilities. No, I think that's true. We, we always, in, for at least for us in, in higher education, we always hear about the sophomore slump. And that's something that, you know, a lot of programs and, and orientation and transition things are geared towards freshmen. But then once you get to that second year, we, we still want you to stick around. We still want you to be successful. So that faculty mentoring program was created to make sure we keep you here and, and looking for the future. And what's your, what are your next steps? What are it going to be like? You know, like, like we talked about internships and finding those, um, those faculty mentoring, you know, that mentor that you get is really beneficial in, in helping you develop that relationship relationship, develop those professional skills as well, and keep moving forward and progressing towards that, that, that degree that you're here for. Um, and then one other thing related to kind of academic support, um, at least in, in more, actually a little more in general um, for the Polytechnic is our welcome week. And so Purdue has Boiler Gold Rush, and that's a very large scale orientation program, but the Polytechnic has its own little version of it as well called Welcome Week. And Cindy, do you want to talk to us about how Welcome Week looks and what, what are the types of things that we try to get our students to understand about uh, the Polytechnic during that week? Yeah, so um, in the past, what Welcome Week was this whole week of welcoming, and we would start off like one of the things that, that you get during Welcome Week is we call it our, our techie tee. It's a, a t-shirt um, that, that kind of brands you as a polytechnic student. And with that, um, the t-shirt, then we also have um, uh, some other events that, that we do, um, in addition to that, that introduce you to the resources within the Polytech Institute. And so um, things like what we have, uh, one of the days we'll have food trucks and representatives from various local businesses, food businesses, basically, that come in and, and so you can get to, to, to know what's going on within the community and what kind of other resources are available to you. So, um, as I said earlier, that's what it's been like in the past. Um, we have yet to see what that's going to uh, transition into this year and, and what we can and cannot do for Welcome Week, but we will have some kind of welcome back for the university. Um, I mentioned uh, earlier the Techie T. Throughout the uh, beginning of the semester, then we also have what we call Techie Tuesdays, and that's where uh, various events occur. And if you wear your T-shirt, then you can um, get a free donut um, on the Polytechnic. Um, it's down in the lobby right outside of our office. So that's another important reason to have the uh, Techie T-shirts. Um, again, we're not sure what all this is going to look like in this coming year. But um, it gives you a sense and a flair of what types of activities and things that we do within the office to help welcome you and make you feel like um, that this is your home away from home and, and to help you understand the resources we have. Uh, another day that we have, we have various support services from across campus come to uh, the Polytechnic for Welcome Week and um, they give you more information as well about their services. And then uh, one of the days uh, we tend to have um, the student organizations within the Polytechnic available so you can identify some different groups that you can join because um, involvement in student organizations is a very uh, important part um, in developing your support network here on campus um, as well as help develop you professionally um, moving forward. No, that's, that's that's great. And and yeah, like we like we talked about a lot of what this is is yeah, things that we've done historically and, and what what they look like will be a little bit different, certainly as as we move into the fall semester and um, different guidelines and recommendations for spacing and, and 
group sizes, things along those lines. But like Cindy mentioned, we're still going to try to offer something that gets you acclimated, transitioned, and, and gets you that information that's really important to know about what we offer. And Cindy actually had a great transition to the end of her little spiel there about our student organizations and getting involved. Um, so the Polytechnic has roughly 60 student organizations, and our office oversees, I think it's five or six of them now. Um, and so that's that's just one way that we kind of help our students get involved. And like she said, uh, get that professional development, leadership development, um, taking on some different roles within those orgs. So, um, Kathy, I'm going to turn it over to you since we haven't heard from you since your intro earlier. I know we've been a little bit further away from you, but um, can you talk to us about our Minority Technology Association student organization, what they do, kind of what, what how students get involved with that? Sure. So um, MTA is another acronym for Minority Technology Association. Um, they've been around for 35 years, and um, it's minorities coming together um, with all the majors within the Polytechnic. And um, they are an organization that, um, you know, their motto is to achieve, endure, um, strive. Um, we want them to be success successful. Um, also, um, they... Um, they do community service projects um, within the Lafayette and West Lafayette area. Um, they get involved in our um, diversity camps, our vision camps, and um, claim it. Um, they also um, participate in um, MLK Week, um, which is Martin Luther King Week. Um, so um, they help our they help our office in any way that they can. So um, it's a great organization. You do need to have that um, sense of community um, gathering. You make friendships. Um, also, there's internship opportunities. Um, it's a networking. Um, they bring in speakers. They meet once a month. Um, so different speakers come in and talk about um, their careers. So it's a great organization to be a part of. Also, I'm one of the co-advisors and Tony is also another co-advisor. So we have two co-advisors. All right, great. Thank you, Kathy. And Tony, do you have anything to add the, about MTA or did Kathy about cover it all? Kathy did a great job. Yeah, she, she covered it. Okay, great. Well, I'm gonna, Tony, I'm going to stick with you then to talk about with you, something in a group we've already mentioned before, uh, women in technology. Um, do you have anything additional that you want to add into what that group does and how they how students get involved, what kind of leadership roles are in there as well? Yeah, our Women in Technology student organization is a great group. Uh, they were established like in 1998. So they're fairly young, you know, only 20 something years old. And um, they have a, currently they have about 100 members. Uh, they meet bi-weekly. Again, we're not sure how that's gonna look uh, come this fall, but um, they also like MTA, have guest speakers, you know, every other month or I mean, once a month or so. Um, they also do fun activities since it's mainly females from all across the, the Polytechnic. Uh, they'll, they'll do crafts, uh, they'll do uh, different um, just activities together just to have fun. But again, it's to, you know, create a community and also to help support them through the, the, the next four years. Um, women are really sought after in industry. Um, you know, our college is about 20% female. And so because of that, we get a lot of different companies coming in wanting to hire our women. And so they get lots of different companies that want to speak to the women in technology organization. I know in, in the fall, usually they do a big panel. Last year they did one, I think it was in September, and they had like about 10 to 15 different panelists from, you know, ExxonMobil, John Deere, Lilly, um, you, you name it, just all sorts of different really big, uh, you know, Fortune 500 companies. But the, the thing with women in technology, they're just um, girls getting together, having some fun and, um, and you know, trying to support each other. And, and it's a really good organization. So again, if you're interested, definitely join. All right, thank you, Tony, appreciate that. Um, our other student organization is actually relatively new is our Purdue Student Council. And Cindy, you're the advisor for that org. Do you wanna to talk to us about the Student Council up here on the Polytechnic? Yeah, the Polytech Student Council um, is is an organization that uh, represents each of the, the departments 
or schools within the Polytechnic Institute. Um, just like in, in high school, you know, it's, it's a student council, so it operates very similarly to that. Um, and what its goal or focus is, is to take items that are of interest to students um, throughout the, the um, college and take those either to the Purdue student government, which is the student government for all of undergraduates at Purdue University West Lafayette, or sometimes there are items that we take uh, directly to to the dean um, that because they focus more on on things and affairs that occur within the Polytechnic Institute. And um, right now uh, we have two representatives from each of the departments or schools, and then um, the executive board with a president, vice president, and so. Um, uh, it's a, it's an organization, particularly if you like, like learning about government and having an impact right there within the college and representing students, um, I would encourage you to get uh, involved with. And um, all of this information is available through BoilerLink. Um, uh, BoilerLink is a whole host of all the univers uh, university student orgs on campus. And so um, there's literally a plethora of them out there. So I encourage you to take a look at that. Um, but you can get more information there, or um, I think we have the resources there uh, or links there that Ryan will talk more about. Yes, uh, Cindy, I think that's a great group to have that student voice to that the dean and other administrators here in the college can to listen in and, and know what the concerns or issues are and, and address those with that group. That's really important to have. Um, and yeah, Cindy's right. The, the boiler link is where you find all the student organizations at Purdue. Um, there's over a thousand of them. So you have a lot of ways to get involved, um, not only within the polytechnic, but just um, outside the, the polytechnic community and the whole university community as well. Uh, things that are more professionally um, focused and like the, the other 55 or so organizations within the polytechnic there's a lot of uh, professional organizations and chapters of, of larger organizations national organizations that are related to our academic fields so those are definitely great ways to get involved and kind of develop your skills a little bit further network with other uh, companies and, and students and um, just again ways to find those opportunities that you might not have seen if you weren't involved with these different things um, one of the a couple of the organizations that we have here in the Polytechnic that I oversee, um, one is our Polytechnic Student Ambassadors, and those are students that help us out with our recruitment events. Um, so they do, they give tours during our information sessions when we have those in person tours again in the future, hopefully um, that we're going to have them start and help us out with our virtual information sessions that we're doing as well. Um, they attend different larger scale events when those come back online as well. They're basically providing that student perspective. Um, to two prospective students who come in and meet with us and, and want to know more about our majors, mo more know more about the college and, and what it's like to be a student in the Polytechnic. So those student ambassadors provide for us that student perspective because we know all about our majors and all the different programs and things, but we want we understand that you know students coming in are, are looking for that student idea. What what is it like to be a student? What that experience looks like. So that's what our student ambassadors do for us. Um, another organization, a group of students that's called our Techie Reps. Um, those students will actually travel back to or connect with their uh, their home high schools and meet with the old teachers, your former teachers or their guidance counselors and talk about the polytechnic with them. So we can only travel so far and, and maybe not even at all this fall semester, but who knows. Uh, but in the past, we really, you don't get, we, we mainly travel around Indiana as for Kathy and I to, to go meet with high school. So for students who are far, further away out of state, um, who want to have, to want to, who want to share that experience, want to share what the polytechnic is all about with the school, maybe in, you know, Colorado that may, may maybe not as, not, not as heard of the polytechnic before. Well, that's their chance to, to kind of spread the word about the polytechnic to those to those former teachers and, and former classmates and help uh, help them understand that this is a great place to be great programs that are going to help them be successful. So um, a couple ways that you can kind of help us out with that recruitment process, at least is the, the student ambassadors and techie reps. So um, for the incoming freshmen, um, we'll, we'll, we'll have that opportunity for you to apply for the the student ambassador program in the in the spring uh, once you have that gpa established because that's definitely one of those requirements we want to have we want to have great students who are doing well and and going to represent us uh, out, out these different events and these virtual events that we start doing as well um, so definitely check out with us and come check with me about what that process looks like but um yeah we we want your help we want that student perspective out there in, in both of those organizations specifically so um yeah we'll we'll definitely get you involved if we can all right um so speaking of getting involved um 
I think uh, Cindy mentioned earlier, Boiler Connect is, is kind of the way that you're you're connecting right now with your academic advisor for Virtual Star, um, and that's also how we um, connect with you, um, set up those meetings. And Guillermo, could you talk to us about what Boiler Connect looks like and how you help our students connect with us and, and get those meetings set up in that form? Sure. So yeah, as, as Cindy mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, so we have, you know, Boiler Connect. So in Boiler Connect, um, it's a great resource. Um, you can schedule an appointment with either Tony, Ryan, Cindy, or Kathy. Um, so if you're having a problem or you have any questions, um, you are able to do that. Um, our name for our appointment center is Polytechnic RRG Canoe 150. Um, and from there, um, you can select either you need academic social support, you need a um, recommendation letter, or um, if you are involved in a student organization, um, you may select that as well. And it's an easy tool where you could see where there's openings, um, where um, the RD staff might be able to, to talk to you. So you don't have to, you know, walk across campus and realize that someone is not available. So um, by looking at the calendar, usually it's up to date. Um, you uh, will be able to schedule those appointments and it's just easy um, and you don't you can do it from anywhere um, so it's, it's a great resource and um, if you have any questions also I'm able to um, go in there and make those appointments manually but we do prefer for you to um, use the resources put in your PUID number and um, book your appointments through there so all right awesome thanks Guillermo um, and then one other thing I want to talk about and have uh, Kathy talk about, she, I think she mentioned it before too, some of our camps that we have um, is how you can get involved with us. Um, so Kathy, could you kind of give us a little bit of a rundown of, of what our programs and camps look like and, and how our students get involved and help us out with those? Sure. So we have seven diversity camps. Um, two of them occur in the fall, which is Wowit and Claimant. Wowit is for um, our high school females. And um, claim it is for our high school um, females and males, um, all are included. And then um, we have two in the spring, which is um, Do It and Vision. Do It is, again, a female um, camp. It's a three-day camp um, for our 11th graders. Um, and then Vision is um, both male and female um, camp for 11th graders and so and then sorry and then we have two more in the summer we have total which is um for 10th and 11th grade and ryan you oversee total and then i have team which is our rising eighth ninth and tenth um, female camps and then um cindy oversees um stem abc which um some of you have probably already signed up and we will be seeing you in three weeks and of course, STEM ABC is for our incoming freshmen um, where you're, you're on campus early. You get to know um, the campus, um, get you connected with um, resources. Um, you're able to um, take um, a class for, for credit. Um, and you get to know us and get to know your professors early. Um, but how um, students can get involved is through our different student organizations. You don't have to be part of the student organizations to want to be involved. But um, so our female camps that we have are usually our um, women in technology who are involved in those. Um, I oversee those, but they do all the work. So um, they are there to talk about their experiences, um, the different organizations that they're in, um, how they selected um, their major, why they wanted to come to Purdue. So it's networking and getting to know um, prospective students. So it's a, it's another tool for recruiting, helping us to recruit um, more students. Um, the same thing with um, MTA. They also um, oversee vision and claim it. And again, um, they're telling their side, they're telling why, they're, why they chose Purdue. Um, how they're involved, what student organizations um, ask any questions, and they talk about their majors and um, their internships, um, if they did any study in abroad. And so they um, help put on and support those camps. 
So if you're looking to get involved, definitely. We have, even in the summer, with team in total, we hire counselors um, to help with the four-day camp. Um, STEM ABC usually has peer mentors. Um, so there's all different opportunities for, for students to get involved. All right, awesome. Thank you, Kathy. And, and Tony, do you have anything to add? I know you, you were kind of the, the mastermind behind all these camps at the beginning when they were all started. Anything to add about anything with those? I, I started talking and forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> um, yeah, some of these camps have been around for a long time. I think Total um, has been around the longest and, and I think the Vision Camp. Uh, but some of the others, you know, I started, I think, back in in early 2000s, 2006, 2005. The only thing that I want to say, I think from the do it camp the other day when we when uh, it was done this year, I think I calculated there had been over like 175 students that actually applied to Purdue or came through Purdue from the do it camp alone. And so it is, it's a really good way to recruit students and get them to see what the campus is like. But we can't do it without our student assistance. And so, because they share, they share their perspective. It's also a really good way for students as, as high school students to connect with the college students. And so, um, you know, right away, they've already have people that they know when they get here. All right, awesome. Thank you very much. Well, um, well the last, last couple of things that we're gonna talk about, just kind of some, some suggestions or action items and advice that we want to share with you as you go through the rest of your summer before you get here in the fall or if you're joining us for the STEM Act and Big Boot Camp next month. Um, one thing that I always make sure to, to tell students as they're coming in, and if you haven't done so already, to start checking and responding to your Purdue email account, email account pretty regularly, at least once a day, uh, maybe over the summer, maybe a couple, two, three times throughout the, the academic year when you're actually here on campus or wherever you are during this fall semester, um, just to make sure you're you're aware of what's going on, you, any announcements from your academic department or your faculty or anything along those lines. Um, yeah, that's that's what that your Purdue email account, especially with any changes or upcoming announcements from the university, um, given the uh, COVID situation right now, that's where you want to check that email from um, to make sure you're staying up to date. And along with that, um, the Polytechnic has a weekly newsletter that we send out every Monday during the academic year uh, with events and opportunities and resources, things that are going on within the college as well as across the entire university, uh, cultural center events, um, internship career fair information sessions, all the things that are happening on campus, we are trying to provide that in that weekly newsletter for you. We also have a text message update. Um, so just one off events or things that are coming up that we want to make sure you have um, just a, in a quick text. We'll send that out as well. That you can sign up for um, So the the Office of Recruitment Retention and Diversity website has the information on how to sign up for that text message system if you want to go ahead and get jumped on that right now. Um, so that's that's a great resource there. But again, just Make sure you're checking your email. Check that. Check that out every once in a while. Make sure you're staying up to date with what's going on um, here at the university. Um, and then, Tony, I'm going to turn it over to you to, to talk a little bit about the the Protect Purdue plan, at least to kind of help our students know what's going on there. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say much because there's a wonderful web website where you can go and see what what's happening and how Purdue is trying to protect you. So if you go to protect.purdue.edu, they have different um, sections on it, but there's a student section where you can see exactly, you know, what's going to be happening this fall. It is updated frequently because things are constantly changing. And so I recommend students and parents to go to protect.purdue.edu. And then that way you'll know what we, you know, what we're saying and what we're doing. For example, it's going to be required that everyone wear a mask. We're also going to be, but we're going to be giving students, you know, wellness kits where they will get masks, where they will get, um, you know, uh, hand sanitizers and all of those types of things. So definitely check that that website um, frequently, and then that way you can see what is happening throughout the summer um, and all the way up to August before you arrive. And were we supposed to give uh, an advice? Well, if you have some additional advice, yeah, go for it. Well, no, the only thing that I was thinking of is 
like Cindy and everyone has mentioned, it's it's life is different, you know, when you come to college. And so don't let things kind of, you know, um, linger or go like if you didn't do well on an exam, um, go to your uh, to your either your advisor or go to your faculty member and, um, you know, find out what happened and, and see if you can improve on it. Um, but get the assistance that you need because, um, yeah, college is different, but you know, one exam does not, you know, say who you are. And so you can easily recover. So make sure that you visit your professors and that you don't let things kind of just linger on, you know, get assistance right away. Yeah, I think that's a, a great piece of advice. Um, Cindy, any, anything to add? Any, any advice for you that you want to share with our students? Any action items that you think that they should know or try to keep in mind as they go through the rest of their summers? Well, to uh, transition from what Tony was saying, uh, uh, go go to class or log into class as the case may be, um, based on what we're hearing now that we might have staggered classes and, and things. So um, go to class, log into class, visit with other students, form study groups, um, Find those people in the class. Uh, one of the things I, I commonly hear, you know, it's like everybody else knows what's going on in class and I don't. I can assure you, if you don't know, probably most of the other students don't know either. And so you have to ask for help. I think it's one of the things that we um, don't do often enough is when we need help to ask for it. Um, and and visit with your faculty member, the, the teaching assistant, your academic advisor, get input from a lot of different people. And um, my sister is a is a academic advisor in the Polytechnic. I've been sitting through probably about 30 or 40 uh, VSTAR sessions now since we're quarantining together. Um, so I would be remiss to remind you get your VSTAR done earlier rather than later because they don't have time to do everybody on the last day. So don't forget to do that and log in and, and do that part of it. But faculty, academic advisors, our office, TAs, everybody's a really important resource and we're right here ready for you. So um, reach out to us and don't forget to go to class or log into class every day. Yeah, going going to class is definitely important. I mean, that's the reason you're here or going to be here or online or whatever the situation may be is, is to get that degree and get those academics completed. So class is a massive part of that. Um, and then Kathy, any advice that you'd want to share with our students coming in? Um, I would say um, everything that Cindy and Tony has said, also time management um, is very important. And so um, you, you have to make sure that you're allowing time um, to study. Also, um, time for yourself, um, time for different student organizations that you wanna be a part of. So just that time management. And please, 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 we are here to help you, to assist you. Um, we want you to be successful um, all four years. I know coming in as a freshman, can be scary. You don't know what to expect. It is different from high school, but um, don't be afraid. Like Cindy said, don't be afraid to ask for help. We are here. Get to know your professors. When um, if they have office hours or virtual hours, you know, take them up on them. Um, you may be doing well in the class, but just get to know them on a personal level. Um, it's same thing. Don't wait to the last minute. That falls up under time management. Um, be organized. Um, we want you to be successful. We are here to make sure that you are successful. And so, um, you know, it's a different experience. And yes, even though we have a pandemic going on, um, you still can be successful in the pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's there's been a lot of great demonstrations and illustrations that Purdue's put out on social media about what's going on here and, and what our students and faculty are all taking part of um, when it comes to being successful during this time. Um, then Guillermo, uh, do you have any advice? You, you meet with, with a lot of students, you see a lot of students, what would you say is something that you want our students to know as well? Well, I think everybody already covered most of it. I, I wanted to say that don't be afraid of to ask for help. You know, you never know until you ask. Um, so 
um, always feel free to, you know, come into our office um, and I will try my best uh, um, to provide you with resources on campus in our building, um, you know, with your academic advisor. Um, there's always ways for things. Um, so always, always ask, always ask and see if um, there is something that we can help you with. Um, and I think that would be the best advice I could, I could give an incoming freshman. All right, awesome. Thanks, Guillermo. Um, I do want to just want to give a shout out to a couple of our viewers who um, one of our viewers said they fell in love with the Polytechnic at the Do It Camp. And then other ones said they had a great experience at Student Ambassadors and at the Vision Camp. And that was a huge factor in choosing Purdue. So thank you to those viewers for attending those events and, and choosing us after the great experience. So that makes us feel great that we're providing those those wonderful experiences that help impact what you decide to do in terms of your college choice. So thank you for that, appreciate, really appreciate that. Um, and then I just wanna go back and kind of mention a few things related to the Protect, Protect Purdue uh, plan. Um, there's, a, there's a student information page, so information that's geared specifically towards students and what you can expect and what's expected of you. Um, there's also the university's overall plan, um, so you can read through that and kind of see what the adjustments are being made um, as the university level um, in terms of like dining and residence halls and classrooms classroom spaces, gatherings, uh, events and organization meetings, those types of things, it's all in part of that plan. And there's also the Protect Purdue pledge that Purdue is gonna be asking everyone to take and work together to make sure we're protecting Purdue, protecting ourselves, protecting each other. Um, so read through that and make sure you, you go through that pledge as well. Um, so that's all through that Protect Purdue. So um, that's where you're gonna find all that great information about what's going on here at the university. Um, additionally, I do want to point out that next month on July 14th, we're going to be having another broadcast that's going to be talking about the ways that the Polytechnic is making adjustments to the academic experience, both on campus and online. So um, tech, take you know, keep an eye on your email for that uh, invitation for that broadcast. Um, we'll have the Dean, Dean Bertolini will be joining us as well as several faculty members who are um, overseeing committees and in, in regards to different topic areas about what the adjustments are going to be and how the Polytechnic is making sure that our learning experiences are still going to be great, um, whether it's on campus or online, what they're going to be, how they're going to be changed, um, just to make sure you're aware and, and what to expect when you come to campus, if you're coming to campus for the fall or if you're going to go through the online learning for the fall semester as well so keep your uh, an eye out for your email for that um so that's that's basically all we we were want to talk about tonight um really appreciate you all joining us uh back at home uh sending in your questions and again the the great camp uh support that we got for you as well um thank you to our panelists my colleagues here in the rrd office uh, here at the polytechnic so like i mentioned before you will be able to to watch this broadcast again as well as all the other broadcasts because we did a lot of them this semester so far um, so take a look at your academic department broadcasts we have one geared towards specifically uh, female students in the polytechnic minority students in the polytechnic so there's a lot of ways you can learn a little bit about what's going on in each of those different areas so um, reach out to us as well if you have any questions tech recruit at purdue.edu uh, please send us an email there's a request a call function as well you can get a, a call set up with one of us in this in the office um, so connect with us on Facebook, social media, Twitter, wherever it is. We want to hear from you. If you have any additional questions or concerns or issues, we want to help you get that information as best we can. So with that, I want to thank you all again for watching at home. Thank you again to our panelists, my awesome colleagues here in RRD. Um, with that, I'll say have a great night and boiler up. <laughs>